What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. What is going on here? I can feel my own here? cooling. Stupid. I can feel my own cooling. Excuse me, ma'am. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Hey. Uh, yeah, you're not supposed to be doing that. Stupid. You know, I have a boyfriend. You don't need to be talking to me. My I know God. what to do with my... <laughs> I love how she goes straight to, you know what? I have a boyfriend. <laughs> Car. Thank you. Well, I, someone's calling you boyfriend having lady. <laughs> I bet she, she probably just ruined that car. I don't know. Chat, let me know. What does that do when you put, when you put water in where it says coolant? Like, the, aren't you supposed to put like antifreeze or something in there? <laughs> that, that, oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is going on? Did they fry the cables? <laughs> we do. We don't need them. We then, do. No, because then lesbians. Who do you who do you call to get your car fixed? Don't forget. I'm also just a girl. Girls get flat tires, you're gonna call a guy to come fix it. You're in a burning building. You're gonna want a male firefighter. Like, <laughs> let's keep let's keep it a buck, bro. Come on. I'm literally shaking right now because I just had a man approach me in a parking lot. He's excuse me, miss, and I don't know why he's me or what he was trying to do. And before he, I mean, he was probably 30 feet from me when he said, "Excuse me, ma'am." And I turned around and I literally yelled at him and I said, "Do not approach me." No man. I wonder why men don't want to approach women anymore. Hmm. Male, no male should ever approach a woman in a parking lot, ever. When you say a man should not ever approach a woman, ever, in the parking lot, how do you know that the man wasn't possibly trying to Musty. help you? You said the man was 30 feet away, lady. I mean, 30 feet away, really, lady? So not only was he polite and 30 feet away, we have to take in consideration it is in the middle of the day. <laughs> I mean... It's in the middle of the day. It seems pretty busy. I'm sure that there was other people out there, but hey, I get it. Whatever the book told you, you executed it to the T, lady. <laughs> How does she enjoy life walking around? I just don't, yeah, I don't get that. How do you enjoy life walking around always afraid something's gonna happen to you? What you focus on usually tends to happen. What is that, Murphy's Law? Willingly and very gladly. And I said, well, how hard can it be? Boys do it. And then I said, how hard can it be? Boys do it. Okay, she and that time it like it like hit me in my chest and I was like, oh my god, that is so real. That is so real. It's just too real. So how literally how hard can it be? Boys do it. I did like the easiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Filling your coolant is so easy, bro. <laughs> Try to change your oil on your own. How about that? Help! We ran out of gas. Help! Hey. Do you know what kind of gas a McLaren takes? The most expensive one they got. Diesel? And the car. Diesel? Stupid, Stupid, bro. How do you drive a McLaren and not even know what kind of gas goes in it? Are you sick of the modern dating scene? I get messages from guys every single day about how to get conversations started with women. They also ask about seduction tips and overall just best practices when approaching and talking to a woman. That's why I'm excited to partner with Marnie from The Wing Girl Method, who is sponsoring this video. Her YouTube channel has over a million subscribers, where she's helped thousands of guys turn their dating lives around using her science-backed flirtation technique called the F4. Formula. This formula has helped over 70,000 men make that first connection and build attraction. And the thing is, you don't need to be a male model or have a million dollars. The F formula teaches the power of flirtatious conversation that anyone can learn. And since the Wing Girl Method is sponsoring this video, the Nix Nation, which is you guys, gets an exclusive free preview of the F formula. Click on the link in the description below to get access right now. If your conversations with women are always falling flat, today could be the day you turn that all around. Fell and landed on my hand. Ooh. Hey, it's Kenny. Now, if you're going to jack up a vehicle, here are three things to remember. Number one, always set the emergency brake. The yes. parking brake on a vehicle is not designed to hold that vehicle in those type of dynamic situations where the weight of the vehicle changes from front to rear and vice versa. 
even better would be to chalk the wheel opposite of the one that you're jacking up. Number two, when you jack up a vehicle, take the wheel that you're taking off of the vehicle and slide it under the vehicle. That way, if it does fall, it does not fall all the way to the ground and then you're able to jack the vehicle up again. That's smart. Number three, be sure to keep any body parts, legs, arms, etc., from underneath yeah. the vehicle. People have had to get amputations from the vehicle falling on these body part members. You know what I'd like to see from... Bro, like, bro, cars are heavy. And if a car fell on your arm, it would probably break it. But yeah, you might you might risk losing that thing. You gotta be careful, bro. Men on International Women's Day. What? I'd like to see them doing things that would actually have a positive impact on women's lives. Well, they are the garbage men picking up your used cat litter. They work in the sewer system to clean up your nasty sh Mine for coal so that you can have electricity to cry about what a victim you are online. Drill for oil so you can have gas in your car to make it to Taylor Swift's concert. Are the truck drivers delivering coffee to your local Starbucks? And are the ones risking their lives working the most dangerous jobs in the country so that you can live a life that's safe and sound? My man's preaching. Maybe you should be the one that's more appreciative of men. Dang, mm -hmm. that's tough. You're 39, how many children? He cooked her. Three. And three baby daddies and they all gang bang. Single mom. Is that something to be proud of? Hmm. So what do you want as an outcome? I want somebody that's loyal. It's really hard to find loyalty nowadays. You have three kids by three different men, and you're talking about loyalty? Stop the cap. You really can't find it at the next corner or none of that. Like these men Loyal, now, lo Hold on, hold on. Loyal to what end? Like a husband? What are you talking about? I want a husband. I want to get married, have kids. You had three chances, and you blew it. What are you talking about? Why, why, I want to live in a hold house. On, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're 39 with three children, right? Yes. How old is your youngest? Three years old. And you want more children? Of course I do. I really want six. Is something mm -hmm. wrong with that? What do you do for a living? I get EDD. Mm -hmm. Is that government assistance? Is that, I mean... I don't know what that is. Unemployment. So you're an unemployed mother of three with three baby daddies, and you're talking about you can't find a man? Yes, hmm. it's some, I'm pretty sure guys. Like, bro, they just don't even realize. Like, when he says it, the wheels are turning, but nobody's home, dude. The lights are on, but nobody's home. Like, when he regurgitates back their scenario and their situation, they're like, yeah, what's the problem with that? On unemployment, three baby daddies, three kids. What are you talking about? I'm a freaking catch. <laughs> Call me Ocho Cinco because I'm a catch. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm, I'm T.O. in his prime. I, I want somebody that's going to help me. Like, you don't think that I could he's get called, that? He's called Jesus. I mean, sorry, but you don't think that I can get somebody to help me? You don't mm -hmm. think a man is going to love me? He's called Jesus. Yeah, huh? you need to pray. Jesus. So basically, you telling me to call on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a therapist. And a therapist. How much an alpha man, and I'm only talking the real men, should be spending on a wedding ring. I love it. Real men only here, chat. Oh, this ought to be good. Yeah. I was always taught, at least in my circle. Ah, according to your circle. A circle which is basically you and a bunch of your friends magically pulling some number out of your ass that you've decided is what needs to be spent. Oh, I wonder what that number is going to be. Let's find out, shall we? That a guy should spend three months of his salary on the wedding ring. So if you're making about 100,000 a year, what is it divided by 12 times three should be about like what, 25,000? Yeah, that sounds about right. Three months of his salary. So a quarter of his entire income for one full year. For a meaningless rock that really has only one value. For you to lord over your girlfriends trying to outdo them. As in, my boyfriend's better than yours because he spent more money on me. And they say it's all about love and companionship. Please. Let's be honest. It's all about the Benjamins, baby. Nothing more, nothing less. You know it. I know it. And she obviously knows it because that's what she's telling us. Oh, what? You don't believe that? Well, 
I mean, it's a wedding ring. It's what she's gonna have on her finger forever. You better invest in that. I mean, honestly, if you're not making over a hundred thousand a year, you have no right to be married. I'm sorry, it is what it is. I love it. I love it. You can't even be married now. You can't even be married now unless you make six figures or more. You can't even be married. And we're talking net, gentlemen. We're not talking gross. <laughs> I want that net income over. Six. Like, come, dude, stop, bruv. What happened to the good old days, man? When a woman loved you for the man that you were, the character that you exuded, and your oh, your ethics, your morality. What happened in those days? We've just lost our way. Women are just all looking for the Benjamins, the money, the gold diggers. That's all they're looking for. It's just money, money, money. It's crazy to me, bruv. But the thing is, ladies, if you do find a guy that's good enough for you, if he's good enough for you, he's good enough for a few. Put it on a t-shirt. Is. is this where I say I told you so? All right, now that we've heard her side, let's Crazy hear what word. a real man actually should spend on an engagement ring. The amount is, drum roll please. He's going to say like nothing, zero dollars. Zero. You shouldn't spend <laughs> one. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> Bro, I got lucky with mine. So with Cass and I, I got really lucky. He's, he's schnookered today. We took him out on a walk this morning, but... What I it was a family family diamond family gold and all I had to do was pay a couple hundred bucks just to get him get him to mold it the jeweler like bro I I got so lucky bro and she was cool with that she didn't she didn't care she was like great let's keep it in the family the sentimental value of the ring meant more to her than how much I spent on it one freaking cent on an engagement ring for a woman with expectations like this because as I said she doesn't care about you. She doesn't care about having a relationship. She cares about one thing and one thing only. Status in the form of money. And the best way, probably the only way she can get that status is by extracting as much as she can from your wallet. She's hey, what's in your wallet? My man from men need to be heard straight preaching. Uh, let's jump into the Twitter. I have some uh, clips I wanted to show you guys. Why are men expected to act like a husband in a boyfriend stage, but you don't feel as though you need to act like a wife in a girlfriend stage until Ooh. somebody chooses to make you a wife? Ooh, see, this is why I always say you got to have the prerequisites to be a fiance and the prerequisites to be a wife. Just like you got to have the prereqs to be a, a mother. You ladies go into these relationships thinking, oh, he should be treating me like, like a wife, but I, I'll never treat him like a husband. No, you got to show that you qualify for the job. That's like showing up to the nicest law office in your town or your city and saying, I want to be a lawyer here. And they're like, all right, have you taken the bar? No, nah, I sure haven't. Have you done any mock trials? Have you done anything to become a lawyer or, or worked in any way, shape, or form to have prerequisites for this job? And you just say no. And they're just going <laughs> to, like, you're dumb. You're not stupid. You don't qualify for the job. Let this woman preach here. Let her preach. Makes sense. If you never displayed qualities of being a wife, why would anybody want to make you one? Facts, bro. Preaching though, but she's right. She's so right. That's what a lot of these ladies get so mixed up is they realize they don't realize that we're looking we're looking for you to have these qualities before we even wife you up, dude. Come on. You ain't got to wait till no man decide to marry you to have no baby. The, the creator gave you the power to have a baby whenever you want. If you want to have one at 19, have one at 19. You want to have one at 25, have one at 25. You want to have one at 32, have one at 32. Just as long as you make sure you have a community of women that will support you. No, no, no. Bad take, bad take. He, like biology say, he can produce and skedaddle somewhere. You ain't got to keep him. He is the one that needs you. He need family. He need a woman because survival of the fittest is his problem and if he don't value you baby it's cool you can raise the children i love it i love it single moms dude single mom. 60 to 70 to 80 percent of the degeneracy in this world comes from single mother households and she's talking about let's make more of them now, another really important reason why people end up single is they have an excessive and inflated version of themselves. Ego, yeah. They seem to think that they are settling when truly they are just connecting to people on the same level. How you know you have an inflated version of yourself is the people you like never like you back. Because the people that are approaching us are 
feedback. Pornography for me. Well, life is a mirror, not, not a window, dude. You attract what you are. Men will have men thinking that they deserve a really beautiful girl. And then when they go on Tinder and they go on matches uh, on websites, they can't, those girls are not looking for them. Or you have this idea that I want to be with a rich, successful, tall guy. He's not looking for you. If you're a man or woman and you go for a lot for a particular physical type, but that physical type either is not attracted to you back or is treating you really badly, change your type to a person who treats you well. Change your type to a person. Well, dude, as Kevin Samuels used to say, bro, you attract what you are. And if you're sick of the people that are, you know, attracted to you or approaching you, it's that's probably right up your alley, bro. Four times divorce. Four times. Let's see. Let's go. You tell me. What do you want to know? What is the most top Four times divorced and proud of it. Toxic thing that you've ever done. Okay, let's do this. All right. Oh, she's like, she's like squaring up in a boxing match ready to talk about this. Hey, take him to court. All right. And then get a good divorce lawyer. Okay, get a good one. This is like the playbook, I guess. Of course. Take them for half of the retirement. Oh. And take them half of their property. Oh. And then fight them for higher child support, okay? Oh, man. This is so bad. There's a playbook for this stuff. Sorry, I was pausing that a lot. It's just there's music behind it, and I don't, I don't, I don't want to get like a... Take that down. All right, here we go. Women is a uh, woman is going viral for saying this on a podcast. I knew my husband was a simp when he accepted the fact that I had three kids. In the simp epidemic, these women know what they're doing, bruv. A lot if we really feel it. It's the ones we don't like. We make them do it all. So you ain't like your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, his teeth are bigger than my dreams. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I, you know, you usually see some gums, but teeth are big. I ain't trying to embarrass my husband even more on the internet, but he was a simp and I seen the opportunity and I took it. Well, I'm saying what, 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 what his qualities was. I mean, for one, he accepted the fact that I have three kids. So you uh, got three kids too? I have three children. And a nigga supposed to come with the bag? They supposed to come. And that's, that's why you have to have a bag. Yeah. Like you gotta take care so of me I'm and saying, my kids. So, so, these women really think that. These women really think that you gotta come in and take care of them and their kids. This is crazy work to me. This is absolutely crazy work. I saw this. I saw this meme the other day. It said, "I saw. I saw. I saw. I saw a quote that said, you can be the whole package and still end up at the wrong address. When this happens, the receiver will mishandle you because one, they don't know what to do with you, and two, they weren't meant to have you in the first place. And woo, that's crazy, right? It's wild work. Uh, and I saw, I saw this meme about fell out my chair when I saw it. Do you know the divorce rates? Men and women, 49%. Men and men, 28%. Women and women, 72%. Who do you think the problem is? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think? Who do you think is the problem when it comes to relationships? Uh, man, oh man. Uh, chat, let me know. Would you date a girl that has so tattoos and piercings all over her face? Why did you have your balloon unpops for him? Um, he's handsome, and I was just kind of waiting to hear more. Okay. So why do we end up popping hers? The tattoos. Yeah. I like piercing. tattoos. It's so yeah, the tattoo, and she, and she, and the funny thing is, she even knows that it's the tattoos and the piercings. I got some too, but you got some in some areas that uh, I'm not sure my mom would kind of approve she see us as men we think about this I, i'm gonna introduce this woman to my family she's gonna be an extension of me if she's not elegant she's not empathetic she's not quaint bro i ain't, I ain't about to I ain't about to say hey this is my girl and that's what i show up with she looks like the desk at detention Are you out of your mind kind of be like uh... <laughs> and i actually have like other things look at that chad is that your type things too other things like what Oh, that's a no. That's a no. She needs Jesus. <laughs> Bro, that's an absolute not. An absolutely no thank you, no thank you, no thank you, bruv. Um, wow. That is... No way. No way, shape, or form. Oh, and I saw this. This is Carlos Miller on uh, Shannon Sharp's show. This was this was great. It's like it's uh, I think it's like dating summed up in 27 seconds. When the last time you seen a tall man with a tall ass woman? Tall men ain't even attracted to tall women. They like short women. 
So then they take all the short women, then they leave all the tall women out here. Now it's just a bunch of short dudes trying to talk to tall women, and tall women don't like short sure men, do. but short men love tall women. The tall women looking for the tall dudes, but the tall dudes that stole all the short women, so the short dudes can't have no short women. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. Carlos Miller's a real one, bro. <laughs> oh, that's just like, dude, it's so true, though. It's so true, bro. Uh, there was one other clip I had for you guys. Um, oh, here it is. I think here it is. Yeah. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date? If he owns the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. Yeah, that's no. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. <laughs> so I think some of the- Hey, even she's repping the prenup though. Shout out to her. This is why I always say, dude, there's two routes you can take when finding a woman. Number one, you can both be peasants and build the kingdom together and reap the rewards of all your hard work. Or number two, you can become a king on your own fruition. Build the kingdom yourself and have a princess and then share her amongst your concubines. <laughs> Those are your two options, bruv. Cass and I met when we were both peasants. We built this together so she gets to reap the, reap the rewards and be a queen in the kingdom. But I'm telling you right now, bro, if I was back single, oh boy, howdy, I would have a little princess and I'd have my 31 different flavors. You could call me Baskin Robbins. Call me Baskin Robbins. But the thing is, it's just, that's not how it is. I'm in a relationship. I'm in a committed relationship and I'm happy. I'm very thankful. Being in a monogamous relationship with Cass has been the most rewarding relationship I've had. Um, and that's, that's with men or women. So it's been great. But the thing is, it's really tough to go out there and find a really good woman these days. They're a rarity, bro. It's very tough. It's not easy. Um, that's why I'm coming out with this new ebook called The Four Values of Vetting. Um, it'll be out probably in the next week or so, but you guys stay tuned to that. Um, I'll show you the cover really quick just so you can see, but yeah, The Four Values of Vetting, because I believe there's four things that every man needs to really, really look at before you actually, you know, can find a, a woman of true value. So The Four Values of Vetting, I'll be putting this out pretty soon. I've gotten it written, but I'm just editing some things and making sure everything's good. Um, but yeah. So be on the lookout for the new ebook. But hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Loki, did you have a good time? Looks like you had a fantastic time. Um, <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the two other ebooks, The Four Pillars of Personality and The Four Steps to Style that make you irresistible to women and respected by men. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.